Hey, what's up, guys? We are back again to unleash the beast in Clash Royale. Electro Giant Elite Barbarians is a card combination that no one wants to play against. Most people would just run away as soon as they see this thing. But the deck gets even more destructive. If you can get Elixir Advantage with your Collector or defending with three Musketeers or Elite Barbarians or Skeleton Army, it is so easy to overwhelm opponents. Usually, your opponent will log on top of the Skeleton Army or the Heal Spirit when paired with Elite Barbarians. So if your opponent goes in for a log on top of your Skeleton Army and doesn't have anything for the Heal Spirit E-Barbs, your E-Barbs are going to be living large and healthy forever. And in this zero-sum game, that means that your opponent's towers are going to pay the price. And if your opponent decides to go for a Fireball or Poison on top of your Elixir Collector or three Musketeers, if the Minion Horde gets onto the tower, its presence can wrap up the game in seconds. And of course, if the Elite Barbarian's Dark Prince Bridge Band baits out a building, the Electro Giant will just seize the game immediately. This destructive deck is perfect for ladder early season to push up trophies as fast as possible. So let's go jump straight into some games and assert dominance. Thanks to everyone that's using Creative Code Search tag to support the channel. And today's video is brought to you by Marvel Strike Force. Marvel Strike Force is a squad-based RPG where you can select from your favorite heroes and villains in the entire Marvel Universe. There's over 180 different characters to choose from in your fight to save Earth. Battle your way through arena, raids, alliance wars, and earn character shards, resources, and equipment to assemble your Marvel Dream Team. As you build your roster and progress through the game, you can finish your enemies off in style by heading over to the costume store and customizing all your characters. There is so much customization with costumes and they're always adding to the game with already over 180 different characters they are going to continue to make the game better and better you're never going to get bored with marvel strike force because there is always something new to do log in and play through in-game events for new character releases holiday events and mcu themed campaigns marvel strike force is available for free on ios and android so what are you guys waiting for click the link in the description of the video download today for free and join the fight all right, so this guy's already saying well played in his clan. Dude, you haven't even seen what my strategy is yet. I could go for a Leap Barbarian's Heal Spirit at the river, and then you're going to congratulate me with the well played. You're going to give me good luck. I have to do it. I literally have to do it. You gave me good luck. We're going to test the waters and see if my luck is actually good. Obviously, baiting out the Bar Barrel is hilarious because now he has nothing for the Heal Spirit plus the Skeleton Army, right? You want that Bar Barrel to clean up the Skeletons. You want that Bar Barrel to finish off the Heal Spirit. And I guess our luck was really good, man. He gave us luck, and... Hand out perfectly, right? Forcing out the tornado, beating up a ton of elixir, allowing me to go for an elixir collector. What could be better than that? Obviously, he'll probably have a lightning. Yeah, I was figuring it would be a Electro Giant lightning deck. But now, he doesn't expect three musketeers. I really want to see an Electro Giant spammed at the river right into three musketeers. I know you have it in you, brother. Come on now. Boy! So, the Goblin Cage should be out of cycle. I can go in for an Electro Giant at the river and get that directly on top of the tower. Obviously, the only thing that's a little bit scary is if he's able to get back to that goblin cage. Oh, no. He's got Ice Wizard. What are those? Wait, he missed it. He missed it. He actually missed it. No way. This is insanely good for me. <laughs> he's going to have to tornado it back. He has to tornado it back. All right. So, he's back in the running of this game. I think I made a slight slip up going for the Electro Giant at the river. I got very lucky that he mistimed and misplaced his Goblin Cage. I'm going to split my three Musketeers. He's not going to be back to Lightning because he had already dropped that on top of the Elixir Collector. So now we can kind of make our dance. We can have our happy stance. If I go for E-Barbs on the right-hand side, he's not going to have Goblin Cage. I wonder if he's going to have any way of defending the Leap Barbarians plus Heal Spirit. Wow, I messed up. I shouldn't have done that. No. Wait, maybe I didn't. Maybe he has no Elixir. Maybe I'm fine. No, I'm completely fine. I was I was trolling. I was cheesing. I was vibing on a different level. <laughs> and this guy is going to be absolutely flummoxed. The E-Barbs are going to get targeted instead of the Skeletons. And that is the saddest Ice Wizard I've ever seen. Look at the damage that I've gotten on the Three Crown. There's no way for him to stop that. All I need to go is in for an Electro Giant. And I will walk away with a win. He's saying GG. He doesn't even know what to do anymore. He's like, get me out of this. <laughs> and you'll love to see it. Hey, minions finish the game. Okay, since I didn't have a big spell, that took a lot longer than I thought it would be. But it is what it is, and we walk away with a glorious W. So getting into this game against Michael, looking at my hand, I've got eight, nine, and five and six cost cards. I don't want to cycle anything here. Now we play the waiting game. Oh, he's going to cycle a magic archer in the back. Dude, I was really hoping you would let me get to double elixir safe and sound. So I'm going to E-Giant here. Oh, wow. This is going to be an uphill battle. Play against a P.E.K.K.A. player with Magic Archer and a reluctancy of cycling cards, too. You know what? I might be able to snipe the Magic Archer with a Minion Horde, and he doesn't know what my deck is yet. If he fireballs or poisons, please, 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 please. Let's go! That's beautiful. So I was hoping that he would have poison. That is way better for me. If he fireballed, what I was going to say is I would get a free Elixir Collector here. 
I cannot go in for a skeleton army because it's just going to get zapped. So it's better for me to go for the Leaf Barbarians. Definitely shut down the P.E.K.K.A. And then get some counter push. So rather play safe than sorry. I don't like losing games out here. And might be able to deal with the Rail Ghost completely with the Leaf Barbarian too. E-Barb shut down a P.E.K.K.A. Destroyed Battle Ram and a Rail Ghost. They are skyrocketing in value. E-Barbs to the moon, guys. You might think that a human being was the first person on the moon. Well, the E-Barbs had something different to say about that. I'm going to Skeleton Army completely devour the Bandit. He wasn't expecting that either. Usually when you see an Electro Giant deck with Elite Barbarians, you will also not see a Skeleton Army and a Minion Horde. So this guy is completely confused and flummoxed. We want to get our opponents perplexed so then they don't understand what cards they should and shouldn't be dropping. And if they make misplays, well, you're able to get juicy trades afterward. I'm going to E-Barbs here. Dark Prince, I was hoping would splash on top of both of our opponent's units, but it is what it is. Remember, he does have poison. Oh, you know what? I, I'm faced with two opportunities here. Do I go in for three Musketeers at the river and just immediately kill the Giant? Uh, I think I think we kill the P.E.K.K.A. and have the E-Giant lock onto the tower. That might have been the right play because it takes forever for Poison to be able to kill that. Like, literally forever. And in that outcome, now you don't have Poison and Cycle for the next Collector. You also took a ton of damage and we're currently winning. Like, I like that interaction a lot more than, you know, playing passive and cycling the Collector and just saying, hey, I'm not going to be able to break through you. Um, I hope that the E-Barbs lock onto the Battle Ram first. Yeah, I was a little bit worried about that. I was like, if the E-Barbs lock onto the Rail Ghost, is the Rail Ghost going to shoot it fast enough? Unfortunately, that did not happen. I'm going to spam our three Musketeers so I win the battle at the river very decisively here. And he's going to poison again. Wow, every single time that he does that, I feel like that's just like a squandered opportunity for our opponent because now he's going to have to deal with an E-Giant on the other side. I was hoping he would peck it here predicting the E-Giant on the other side. Oh, I was really hoping that would work out. But there's no Magic Archer and there's no poison. So he's going to have to Electro Wizard here. Are you not going to Electro Wizard on that? Oh, there's the E-Wiz. It should die immediately to the Minion Horde, and then I can go in for E-Barbs and a Dark Prince. The way that I play this game is like, no Pack and Cycle, no E-Wiz. That means you have no way of stunning or stopping my huge bridge spamming the other side. Hopefully, right? This should work. Come on now. We have a massive Elixir advantage right now. I, I can just keep spamming because it's really hard for our opponent to afford a poison and a P.E.K.K.A. That's almost all of his elixir. Especially when we've got Heal Spirit. When you poison, it's not going to kill the Electric Giant. And it's definitely not going to kill the Minion Horde in time. Minion Horde is still thriving. We're going to keep snowballing our elixir advantage and spamming more cards at the river. And that's how Electric Giant is played successfully with an elixir collector. When you get an elixir advantage, even if your opponent has cards that counter you, if they can't keep up with your elixir, they won't be able to afford the proper counters. I have to say this has probably been one of the most fun decks I've been playing in a long time. A Electric Giant with crazy cards like Minion Horde and Heal Spirit to make sure that you get unorthodox interactions, keeping your cards alive when they just shouldn't be. It's just, it's the best. Nothing beats it. Also, maybe as soon as I said that, I spoke too soon. We're playing against a Rail Hogs player, likely going to be the fastest cycle one possible with Earthquake, which is going to be the bane of my existence with this deck. If you play against this matchup, it is going to be a miserable interaction nine times out of ten. But what I'm hoping for is to make sure that he has to Earthquake on top of the Skeleton Army, and then we can go for a free Elixir Collector and shut him down. Also, he used the Archer Queen ability, wasted it, and now he's going to go in for a Cannon. Wait, this might be the moment. This could be the time. We got the spicy sauce. There's no Cannon in Cycle, and it's single Elixir, so it's going to be really hard for you to cycle four cards to get back to the Cannon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for a Heal Spirit with my Electric Giant, and I'm going to Skeleton Army here. I hope he logs the Skeleton Army. Or the Heal Spirit, sorry. So then he has nothing for the Skeleton Army. He does not log the Heal Spirit. Oh, oh, I really tried to cheese him there, guys. Usually, Heal Spirit or Skeleton Army will get logged. Your opponent has to pick one or the other. He chose to hold it and play passive. So smart decision on our opponent's end. Still a miserable matchup for me. Like, I can't sugarcoat it. I still think I might lose this game. I have to play hardcore defense mode, and it's not even Clash Royale. It's like tower defense out here. It's a new game mode. Speaking of which, Clash Royale needs to start adding a tower defense game mode to like kind of like a zombie apocalypse where you're trying to defend against an onslaught of units coming at you and see who can survive the longest. I feel like that would be a ridiculously cool game mode. Let me know if you guys give me a thumbs up on that or what you guys think in the comment section down below. Are we going to go for Elixir Collector here? Do we want to go in for Three Musketeers? I mean, I think Three Musketeers all on the same side isn't the worst decision. Reason is, we are able to fire power down all the piggies pretty quick. If he goes in for a rail delivery, then he's screwed against the minion horde. If he earthquakes, we might be able to pop off with an elixir collector advantage. Still though, even after we do that, we're, we're in a troublesome predicament. Wait, I don't think he's able to log everything. Dude, what are you doing? 
What are you doing? What are those? Yo, he's gonna rail delivery here. He has to. I don't think the heal spirit got him down in time. That's unfortunate. Dude, dude. I might actually lose this. I said it was tough. I told you it was gonna be sticky and tricky. And I uh, <laughs> I did not lie about that in the slightest. He has to, no, I think he can log that now. Yeah, no, he can definitely log that. Why is he earthquaking instead? What is, what is he doing? What is this wild child doing? So I'm gonna go for Electro Giant in the middle and then Skeleton Army to disperse and pray that it works out. Skeleton Army, put in the work! If he logs and rail deliveries, the skeletons are actually on the tower. The skeletons are on the tower with the Electro Giant tanking. Just smile and wave, boys. Smile and wave. All we have is three skeletons. That is all I have to win this game right now. And that might be enough. My goodness, this game has been very spicy so far. So I want to go for Minion Horde just to bait out the ability earlier. I don't want to go for Leap Barbarians because that's going to be one of our best answers to his Bridge Spam. So we'll go for Evarbs now. He's going to pre-log a Skeleton Army that just was non-existent. And I think I can vibe with an Electro Giant Skeleton Army here. That's what I'm going to plan on doing. I can go for an Electro Giant, wait for the Electro Giant to take the Fire Spirit, and then Skeleton Army afterward, Heal Spirit here. Please get it. Come on now. Let's get those E-Barbs on the tower. The Electro Giant's going straight towards the tower that we needed it to. No way. No way. E-Barb on the tower, putting in the work. I'm going to three Musketeers and split it. I think I can actually win this game. No way. This is definitely the hardest matchup for me. He's going to Earthquake on one Musketeer. He's tilted right now. <laughs> he's so tilted. He's like, I got to get damaged somehow. All right. Uh, I think that he's going to be able to shut this down. Why would he go invisible there? The, the Musketeer locks onto the tower. That's beautiful. And then the musky locks under the tower on the other side, too. It's to me, a lot of tower damage. <laughs> That's not a matchup that you should ever win. But if you can bait out your opponent's earthquake with your skeleton army, get an elixir advantage with the collector, then you have a much higher shot of winning. Or as you guys saw earlier for me, if you can bait out the cannon with your elite barbarians and bridge spam, you can go for an electro giant at the river and collect your free tower. So I'm waiting for my opponent to make the first play as per usual. If he cycles something into elite barbarians or three musketeers, the counter push that we'll get is absolutely devastating. Not gonna happen though. Oh. Do I go for three musketeers in the back and just start the game because I'm so impatient? I think that's going to be the play. Hey, wait. No, he cycled something into the three musketeers. That's awesome. That is a three elixir donation that we don't even have to respond to. Oh. Okay. All right. This is going to be a bit more risky and suspicious for me. If I go for e-barbs to keep the musketeers alive and a heal spirit, we could cannibalize the golem here. I think that will be the better play. I'm going to guess that he goes in for a skeleton army or something on top of the musketeers. So I'm going to go for a heal spirit pretty quickly on too. Yeah, that worked out really well. You know what? All things considered, we are able to slap that mini pack of silly with the skeleton army and not going to have to worry about the golem exploding on anything. Yo, he's spamming still into me. Let's go. This is going to be awesome. That's ludicrous that he's spamming into me like that. Dark Prince Shield is going to take it for the team and we will have the dream. Obviously, the bats are going to be pretty annoying for a bit of time, but not going to be that much damage. We've got more value in the right-hand side against him. And I'm looking at a golem deck, expecting him to probably have lightning, but we saw goblins, so I'm really weirded out by that. Like, goblins are the card that you never see unless they're in a barrel. Usually, they're just too ashamed, and they have to hide themselves for a long period of time. So I'm going to go for Elixir Collector in the back, expect to get lightning, because that's what most people run when they're running golem. It's either going to be, like, golem clone or lightning. There's the lightning. And now, we have the three musketeers to come out of the box and just bop this man. So I'm excited for him to go for a golem in the back, hopefully. And then we can go for three musketeers on the same side. I can also maybe endeavor with elite barbarians and heal spirit. Expect him to go in for a mini pack and completely kill it. Oh, dude. Dude, that's bad for him, right? That that e-barb spam is going to do some serious damage to the three crown. He doesn't have lightning back and cycle for another three cards because he only cycled one, which was the mega minion. That means I can go for three musketeers here and devour the golem. I'm here for it, guys. Let's show you guys the power of the Three Musketeers sauce. So he's expecting me to defend that with uh, like a skeleton army. I don't do that. Great snowball, pushing it right into the... Oh, this is kind of bad. I really didn't want that to get pushed into the baby dragon, but I got to leave barbarians on deck. We devour the tower and we stand firm on defense. You'll love to see it. He's going to lightning as well. I wonder if I could take another tower. He's saying good game, but the game is not finished, bro. We got to collect those juicy pastoral crowns. We go for the heal spirit with the musketeer and just walk away with a win. There's no way for him to stop it anymore, especially if we've got minion horde. We're going to unveil our true colors, our final form and potential out here. Minion horde, skeleton army, I choose you. With 15 seconds remaining, I'm not even going to give him the ability to go for a golem in the back, not dropping a golem at the river. You have to defend the entire time, bro. And you'll love to see it.
He's so salty. He spammed good luck like seven times, saying that I had good luck winning. So getting right into the action here, you guys already know we do not want to make the first play. Please, sir, cycle stuff into my minion horde. Okay, you want it for a zap? That's beautiful. That's what I like. If I dark burst in the back, he's up two licks right now. He's like, ah, oh, I got to go and cycle stuff into the other side. Without the zap, the minion horde will give us amazing counter pressure. Not going to happen as well, unfortunately. I wonder if it's better for me to cycle my three musketeers here. It will kill the Dark Prince without it connecting to my tower. And we'll see what you do. Maybe if you've got freeze, you can screw me over. Fireball is not going to be enough. They'll lose the Dark Prince, bruh. And you don't have Zap either. I'm going to play really risky right now. This is likely not the thing that you want to be doing if you're playing Clash Royale correctly. But screw that. We are wild childs. Oh, that was so bad. That was so bad. I risked it for the biscuit. And he had a minion horde counter of Electro Wizard. The credit where credit is due, this man completely annihilated me. Oh, I hate when that stuff happens. I, a lot of this deck does revolve around luck sometimes. You make the plays that are having high probability of you getting the tower there. And if it doesn't work out, if they have, you know, hard counters in their deck, sometimes they'll be able to defend. So well played to our opponent. Uh, I'll go for Elixir Collector in the back whenever I can. Make sure that we drop it in the left-hand side so when he fireballs it, he's not going to hit the tower he wants. Oh, wait, what? Okay, this is going to be a giant deck. Is it going to be giant miner, though? I have to wait and see. Oh, it is. Please catch it. Please catch it. Please catch it. RNG! Let's go! We went to Vegas. We bet it all on the left-hand side, and we came out alive. That was awesome. You got to get lucky sometimes, and that was the epitome of luck. So I'm going to E-Barbs as quickly as I can. I'm not going to drop a minion horde. I could have done that, but it's not going to be as good as getting the E-Barbs counter pressure. Also, I can heal spirit here. Please go on to the mega minion. No! That was the most useless heal spirit ever. It gave us absolutely nothing, right? It didn't heal up the one that was damaged, and the other one was already at full HP. It is what it is. We do what we do, and we bounce onwards and upwards. So I'm going to throw Musketeers in the back because he doesn't have Fireball and Cycle. And now we have our moment. This is our time. With a minute left over, I can Electro Giant at the river. It's just I want to see his reaction. I really can't wait to see this guy's reaction right now. How stupid do you think my deck is? Let's see it. Let's see the wows. Come on now. Wow. Oh wow. You're not. You're not gonna say any wow. You're not. You're not gonna give us any, any type of emotion at all, bro. What's up with that? The Electro Giant's on the tower. You're gonna zap. That doesn't even matter. Dark Prince dies, and Electro Giant's just going off. <laughs> what a stupid card. How is that fair? You know, like he had a prince there. He had answers. But if you don't have a building, I guess you just automatically lose. And that's how good Electro Giant is. If you surprise people with a card that shouldn't be in the deck, you're probably gonna get a lot of value or, you know, catch your opponent off guard without a counter. So I'm gonna go for a three musket. Are you kidding me? He made a prediction. He knew. How did he know that I was gonna drop the three musketeers there? Are you kidding me? Is this guy just a savant? Can he foreshadow the future? He read me like a book and it didn't even matter. Wow, that's insane. That is actually preposterous. <laughs> I think the minion horde should be able to kill almost everything here. I know I've got to leap barbarians back on deck. So the counter push with the electric giant at the river will secure the bag and we will walk away with a delicious W. It's also pretty painful for our opponent to watch the Electro Giant get healed up. You drop everything you possibly can on defense, literally double princes with the Mega Minion, as much damage as you could throw down, and it doesn't even matter. What I'm trying to say is if you don't have a building and you're playing against an Electro Giant at the river, you automatically lose the game. Like, subscribe, and have an amazing rest of your day.